time this year at many sagas, and so that's just going to be one big thing that Abadango's got to be careful for. So I'm assuming the Bayonetta is going to come out, but he did pull it out the last time that he fought Nairo, and it still kind of got Mollywop there. So hopefully he's been doing some preparation in order to get ready for the set. And it looks like here we go, going into game one. Now, obviously, if you're looking at what has just transpired, we did see Abadango coming off of the win on Komodakiri, and we saw Nairo coming off the loss on Captain Zack. So the momentum right now is a little bit in Abadango's favor. Furthermore, as you just mentioned, uh, unlike the previous sets, we do see a far more developed Bayonetta here, and it's already putting in work. We also saw Nairo just losing to this character, this developed Bayonetta. But the same way how Komodakiri just lost to Bayonetta and then beat the second Bayonetta after getting some adaptation in there, perhaps Nairo can also show that he can do the same thing. So very interested to see how the state of the match develops and how these two uh, opponents improvise against each other as they go into this set. Yeah, but Pierce, I just blinked and all of a sudden Nairo is at 109% and Abadango barely has any percent on him so far. Looking very, very dominant here, but still, Nairo trying to get something big here, but he's able only to clip with these single up airs. Has not even converted into anything big so far. Yeah, not even multiple up airs in a row. And there's going to be the back air to up smash off the witch time. That's going to be the first stock, but I certainly wouldn't catch Ni count Nairo out by any means. Oh, uh, just a single hit up air into the boost kicks. Not enough to take it. The corner saving Abadango there just a little bit. Still a lot of damage, though. 79, not an insurmountable amount. If he's able to find something big, catches him with the back air for another 13, totaling that up to 92. And now he's got an edge trap trying to find something off the paralyzer. Very smooth landing into down tilt, but a back air is going to come out, clean it up, and now we're at 20. Yeah, what a back air. It looked like it kind of got Abadango just pointing in the wrong direction. So there looked like a little bit of wonky DI as well. Well, these two in close quarters, kind of whiffing in front of each other. Nairo tries to get a little bit of space back to try and get that grab. Does not happen, and what a way to get a grab from Abadango. That's an interesting setup there. Haven't seen it at all at all today, I think. Uh-oh, Nairo just doing a standard wake-up against a second, which time he's going to miss an opportunity there. Get himself kicked in the head, but he does find himself a grab here. Back air coming out, second back air coming out. We are going to take the damage even with no knockback, and that's good enough for Nairo right now. All right, these nares just interrupting Nairo's attempts to try and convert something big. It's Three nares in a row, here. actually. Yeah. Three in a row. <laughs> now Abadango. Nairo trying to make it happen. Talk to me, Cedric. How's Abadango getting back on the stage? Uh, he's going to use that easy uh -oh. recovery and a little bit of a whiffed side B, not able to get that ledge trump into the back air. Abadango trying to get something big here with the heel slide. He's not able to convert it into anything, though. He's not getting that last hit. He's getting these... The, the B moves, but he's not getting that A button that's able to try and close out the stock here. And it's a little bit rough for Abadango here so far. That Witch Twist catching from so far away. Nice overhead coming out there. Uh, excuse me, nice anti-air coming out there. When we see the overhead attempt on Bayonetta, the up B comes out from Nairo. He is able to connect that. It's not going to be a stock. But now Nairo taking his time here, trying to find a kill, trying to get some pressure back. Up tilt, not quite going to connect. Nairo is in trouble. Yeah, very, not very wisely timed air dodges from Nairo. Just to avoid all these air aerials to attempt to edge guard him. But Nairo Abadango's wants to ground. Abadango still with the control here. Gets that Nair. Puts him off stage. Uh-oh. Tech? There we go. Nairo always hits that tech. He's ready. Yeah, try to catch Abadango off guard there with a the hitbox from the heel or the, the flip kick. It's just not quite happening so far. Still anyone's game. I think a, a couple of throws from Bayonetta might be able to do it or at least send him in a good position. If Not he gets from it at the stage. ledge, at the ledge he might be able to get it though. Yeah. Now we've seen this before. We've seen Nairo need to find that kill opportunity. We've seen him looking for these backers. We've seen him lose the game just like that. So I wonder what's going to happen now here. Is Nairo, has he figured something out? Has he come up with a creative solution? Has he studied since the last set? Because he knew he would have to fight another Bayonetta. We do see him there looking for the up smash to see if he can get that to convert into a kill. We do have a full rage Zero Suit Samus on our hands here. Yeah, and I like how Nairo's Literally at least... smoke coming off her suit. I like how at least Nairo's mixing up between the empty hops and the back airs just to throw off Abadango, Ooh. trying to make him hesitant on throwing out that wish time. And right there, there is the result of that conditioning, able to get that back air, catches Abadango off guard, and he's able to get game one. And you see the disappointment in Abadango's face as he slaps himself on the forehead, like, how could I get hit by this? Yeah, and Abadango. Let's see if he can try and recompose himself a little bit. I think that Bayo is actually a pretty good choice, and I'm pretty sure he's going to stick with it as well. And here we go, going right back to Smashville. Even Nairo looking a little bit disappointed, thinking maybe I'm not playing my best or something. Nobody is at all satisfied with what's happening, but Nairo will not be any too upset if he does manage to close it out. 
all three games, manages to find himself out of that combo with a very, very clever kick. Yeah, I think uh, Nio should probably stop dash attacking immediately in neutral. It lo looks like that isn't really working and Abadongo's not having it at all. Nice okay. combo here coming out from Bayonetta with the triple forward air, but Nairo does some fancy air work, get himself back into the air and onto the stage. There's the up tilt, sets up into double up air, but he does not commit to the up B. Here's a grab coming out from Bayo. Does manage to convert it pretty well, but great DI from Nairo is going to get him into the driver's seat. Both players fairly close to each other, 16% separating the two. I always love Nairo at the ledge. Whenever he's throwing out those, whenever he's throwing out the web, he's just some fancy moving going on. Trying to throw off Abadongo a little bit, but he makes it back safely to the stage. It's not phased at all by Nairo's movement. Nairo just trying to dash himself into some real estate there, but he's not going to be allowed in. Bayonetta kicks him off the stage, and that's going to be a stock right there. Yeah, Abadongo with a pretty convincing lead so far. Only 75%. Guys, again, that up to a great DI from Nairo. The boost kick does not send him the other way. Not able to get that final hit that potentially could have gotten the kill. Nairo trying to make something happen. Does find a dash attack, but that's not going to be a kill. He wants to really get a down smash, and he finds that down smash off of Witch Time, but it's not able to get a kill, even with a charged forward smash here. So Nairo a little disappointed right now because he's going to have to get another setup, and those don't come too often. That's a little bit of a rare treat that he was able to get such a decisive hit. Yeah, I'm sure that it was just pixels away from being able to get that stock. So a little bit unfortunate for Nairo, and already tacked on to 78%, 87, and still going. Abadongo, so much control on the second stock. And again, that kickflip. Oh! OK, never mind. That kickflip looked like a bait that time. Just jumped right into that back air. Is able to finally able to get that stock. But Abadongo immediately answered back, gets that up air. And that's a way to answer for that first game. Such that was so close, able to bring that back all the way. We have ourselves a two-game situation here. One-one split between the players. We're going into game three right now, and Abadango's got to feel a lot better considering how well he was commanding that game. But Nairo looks undeterred. He's like, all right, you know what? I got this. Let's go. Keeping his composure. He's like, you know what? I may not like fighting this character, but we're going to do what we came here to do. Takes him to Dreamland. Trying to find something here, being really patient, waits for the wish time, but unfortunately, Bats Within comes out, not able to get anything bigger. Nairo managed to get himself back onto the stage. Wispy not helping out at all. Oh, a down tilt, not able to find that fair though. Trying to make it back to the stage, Bat Within helps out a lot there. Nairo almost able to get something open up there, rolls on the platform into the back air. Bayonetta once again retreating to the edge. Grabs right. the wrong way, gonna get punished here. Oh, down, down tilt into a conversion. Them. Not able to find anything else there. I like that falling up there, just getting away from Nairo. Oh, <laughs> just turns around and he's like, ooh, you whipped the grab? Okay, well, here we go. We're back. <laughs> Which was no up air. Nairo can potentially get something here, but he's having a really hard time just trying to get punishes that matter. It looks like he gets a single hit here and there, but Abadongo mainly the one with all of the control. No jump here coming out from Nairo. He's not gonna be able to make it back to the stage. As hungry as he is for these hits, he's not finding anything. And I think we're seeing the same story about Nairo versus Captain Zack. It's just for the hits that matter and the ones that are going to be able to close out those socks. It's just not happening for Nairo. And Abadongo has been making the most out of his conversions, getting so much percent, almost trying to overlap here. And he's barely been hit, only 38%. These batch withins are working so well for him. And one thing we know about Abadongo is that he is no stranger to defensive play. He is very, no oh way. my gosh, bro. Oh. The Bayo setup where you get the first off air and just catch him again with that second one to kill off the top. Abadongo uh, looking actually, so clean. Was that three up airs though? I think it was up B into triple up air. Uh, he, he, he pressed a lot of buttons, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Abadongo 2-1 over Nairo. This is something that I definitely was not expecting, but looks like that Bayo has been worked on and is looking so fresh and so clean here. This is where you're gonna need to see that veteran resolve come in for Nairo because he's been in this situation before, but he has to, you know, every time you're in this situation, it can't be any easier than the last time. You have to say, you know what? I need to buckle down. I need to do it. You have to not really think about what just happened in the captain's accent. You have to not really think about the fact that you don't like playing against Bayonetta. You have to not think about the fact that you're down a game in such an important tournament. You just have to think about the stock right in front of you, and you're going to have to 
work a lot harder and do a lot better to manage to convert it into something that you really need if you really want it bad enough because that's what it really comes down to today. Who wants it bad enough and who deserves it? Who is the better player on that day? And is Nairo going to let Abadango be the better player on that day? So far, it doesn't look like it with four up pairs in a row. All right, trying to get another one. He had the platform assist too, but just great DI from Abadango, able to get out of the situation. Potentially big here, but Abadango just gets out of that situation before he gets too hairy. Oh, and just crouches right underneath Nairo's hitbox and able to get that up tilt. Not able to convert to anything, but still, just amazing awareness from Abadango and just shows how he's been able to get these conversions. Good spacing there from Nairo. Gets in, puts on some pressure, sees if he can bait out an up B or any other whiff moves, and then tries to find him with a paralyzer shot. But unfortunately, he was not keeping an eye out for the dive kick there. Now Abadango, still trapped onto the edge, but able to alleviate a little bit of the pressure. Hasn't been getting kicked around as much as he was earlier in the set. Neither player takes their grab opportunity. Reverse up B, not going to cleanly connect on the final hit. Nairo's got a grab. Uh, not able to find anything though, and that's what I'm talking about. Abadango just finding these right 50 50s, these right situations where he's able to get out of these really, really scary um, positionings. And so Nairo's just having a really hard time close out the stock. Whoa, that DI on that up to look really weird. It did, it was set, wonky. Yeah, able to set up right into that back air. Expecting a witch time here, because Nairo is definitely looking for this back air. Whiffs the grab, gets himself back air. Throwing out a lot of aerials, trying to throw out that back air, keeping Nairo Big hesitant. Oh. oh man, Nairo cannot catch a break today. <laughs> He's got a little bit of a break there, broke Bayonetta in half as he kicked that stock right off of the right side deadline from the left side of the stage, just banished him. Yeah, just a quick DBZ up tilt to the Jimmy Choo's. That's gonna be the next stock. <laughs> Here we go, 1-1. One, one. But potentially, Abadango could take this the way he's playing. There's a big heel slide, just getting into 27%. He's got the control here. You can hear the crowd trying to let Nairo get himself pumped to try and bring this back. But it looks like Abadango is just playing out of his mind here. Nairo misses a tech, and he's not punishing any of these witch twists. Abadango just runs up, casts another one right at him. Big combo here, Smashville platform looking to assist off the top. Nairo flips out of it, but he's still getting caught. Manages to drop out of this one too, but can he start something of his own? Yes, we do find it here, does find the forward air, tries to connect it into a down smash, but we're not having it. Nairo upbees himself to the ledge. Oh, uh, just confidently gets that grab. Calling out that neutral getup. Let's see if he can try to get something here. Nairo makes it back to the stage, but ABK just immediately gets out of there. Up air, not able to connect. Nairo still with a second chance of life. Gets that grab. That's his big. This is big. Gets that up air into the up B, and that's not going to be able to still take oh the stock. Gosh. Oh, Nairo jumps into the neutral air and needs to keep himself very safe here. Catches Abadango looking a little too hungry. Back air's nothing and finds it off the edge. That's Nairo, ladies and gentlemen, converting when there is nothing, when everything looks dark, when nothing is around and everything is glum. Nairo pulls it out. Nairo finds a light and at the end of the tunnel pulls out that W, bringing us to a game five. Cedric, did you see that? I saw it, Pierce. I saw it. That wasn't even game five. That, we're, we have one more game to go, and that is exactly what I'm talking about here. What an explosive set coming from these two down to the wire. Here we go on their last breaths here. We're going to game five back to Smashville. Let's see what these two players can do here. The game has slowed down a little bit. Both players are looking for grabs on each other, try and find some openings. I love that. I love that. Back air right there on the cross-up. He could have gone for Nair. He could have gone for up air, but he said, you know what? I see the spacing here is a little bit incorrect, so I'm going to do something ambiguous so I don't get punished. And lo and behold, he manages to keep himself safe and gets the reward here by keeping the control. Finds the grab. Double neutral air into the flip kick. Was not able to get the meteor spike, unfortunately. So Abadango's got a second chance at life here on his first stock. Trying to get something big here, but Nairo playing a lot more confident than he was in the first four games, for sure. This is the Nairo that I was looking for when I was getting excited to cast this group. This is the Nairo that makes dreams come true, and this is the Nairo that sends people home in tears. Abadango's going to make sure, to have to make sure to really maintain his composure and pull this out if he wants that win. Remember, Nairo's up 5-0 here. Oh, what a back air just able to answer for that dive kick. 
puts him into the good position again, tries to find something. I think that was a reverse grab, but not quite able to find it. Abadango going on the chase, not able to find any of these hitboxes, but wow. still gets the witch time. Double back air, that could potentially nope. be the stock. That's and it. it is. Nairo's gonna need to have to find himself a kill right away here. He cannot afford to take too much damage from Bayonetta, but he does get that grab. Not able to convert it into that back air. Good DI from Abadango. Oh, and both, both of players these two angling play their chicken. shields up. They know what they're doing. Shields up. That's it. We see finally, actually, Bayonetta popping out of the boost kick as we've seen so many unfortunate times in the past for Nairo. Big combo coming out here for Abadango. He's managing to get his grabs. He's taking his time on the ground, keeping his composure. Neutral air coming out, back air coming out. Abadango controlling the space. There's a witch twist. Platform assisted combos, not gonna happen. Big opening here, but Nairo doesn't take advantage. And he just throws out a forward smash. He says, get off my stage. 79% uh, though, that's a lot for Nairo to make up for. He's playing chicken again with the shield, but Abadango just immediately gonna get that. Gets the grab, comes out first before Nairo's. Gets control of the space again, and that's just mainly what I think Abadango's been playing at here, just able to control so much space. But here we go, a big grab, but not able to get anything. No treadmill, no nothing, no space to be able to convert into these up airs. And it looks like this is game over, Pierce. Abadango is just playing way out of his oh. mind. There's the back air, and Abadango takes it over NRG Nairo. Oh my gosh, not like this. Nairo did not want to go out that way. He fought tooth, nail, and claw to get himself into that game five situation, but he just could not overcome the aerial onslaught from Bayonetta. Once Abadango started zoning with those neutral airs and those back airs, Nairo just couldn't get any momentum going. And at the end, I don't even think it was so much Abadango's defense, which is what carried him through the entire first half of the set, but Abadango's offense keeping Nairo on the back foot. Yeah, that was just so unfortunate. Nairo not able to get anything. And I think that's Nairo's chances of making it past the uh, pools. Yeah, just watch gone. out. Yeah. Watch out. Uh, he's down 0-2 and Abadango is up 2-0. That was something that I was not expecting. But here we go. Here's the highlights. And there's that back air and able to get the up, to, up smash. And Abadango's been landing a lot of wish times in that set. And I think that's put him a little bit of a more of an edge as well. But there was the quick back air out of that combo. Caught him on the wonky DI. Nairo answers back. He is able to find himself a back air here. And again, that's really what the whole set came down to. Can you find these kills? Can you close out the stocks? This is not something that Nairo is used to having to deal with, not being able to kill opponents with his character, right? Yeah. Nairo is a type of player where he wants to blow up his opponents. He wants to make their stocks disappear right away. And in this set, he was just not able to make that happen. You know, he really had to struggle to take any stocks at all. Some of the stocks he got were off some ridiculous hard reads, some very, very creative, clever situations, but not things that you can make consistently occur, unlike Bayonetta, where you can see very consistently is able to get the upbeat combos into those up airs off the top of the stage. Yeah, and pretty much every single time, like right over there, Nairo's been trying to get kills with back airs and just kind of limited the options, and Abadango's able to make the most out of everything. Again, a back air catching that recovery, and that was the comeback, but still, Abadango was able to come out on top. Yes, a, a bunch of sneaky offstage back airs, we're, uh, we're really helpful for him, but yeah. we, don't, we don't get to see these consistent back airs. Shield pressure and then a surprise forward smash again, but again, nothing consistent. And that's what you're gonna need. He jumps into this back air here, not what he wants, and Nairo is struck with grief at his mistake right there. We are actually gonna be able to catch Abadango for an interview right now. So we are gonna throw it over to Vicky Kitty, who's on the stage. Thank you guys for that. Wonderful introduction, and here I am with Abba. Abba, you told me right now, oh my gosh, you were so nervous. Your heart was racing. Rage was a fear factor in that set. How do you feel right now that you are 2-0 in your own wave? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a little relieved, but I want to win one more to make sure I, I can make it out of poo. Just one more. All you need is one more. You're so close to get into that top eight. Are you excited for the rest of your racket? Yeah, Zach, Zach is one of the hardest opponents for me. To, in this season, I lost to Zach 0 3, so it's gonna be tough, but I do my best. Good luck with the rest of your matches, Abba. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Back to you. All right. And and we're back up here, man, and, uh, you know, tough break for Nairo, man. Two yeah. Bayonetta's, unfortunately, uh, giving them the sauce in Group B. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But, you know, Abadongo, man, looking to be in great shape to make mm-hmm. it out of Group B on winner's side. And, yeah. you know, yep. uh, he was the fourth seed in this pool yes. as well. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. unbelievable. And we knew going into Group B, it was going to be a very crazy group. Yep. Well, yes. These four types of players. And Abadango, man, coming through and getting some results, fam. Yeah, man. The thing about it is for Abadango, he even told me uh, previous to Fire Emblem Saga, he really thought that statistically just even made no sense for him to come. He just thought that he there's no way that he could make it in the championship, let alone be a top eight. But right now he's sitting pretty. He's he's moving on forward. And I mean splendid play is gonna utilize of course the bayonetta. And this is I know for Knife Room Nation this is a heartbreaker. And uh, I know you say it. I know that sure there's other people say it. That <laughs> That matchup, dude. Zerasu, yeah. Bayonetta, man. Especially when you're a master of so many characters like Nairo, I can't bear to see this happen time and time again. Mm-hmm. That's just so rough, especially for what Bayonetta, uh, in terms of uh, Zerasu's game, is at the time of day. Like, you need to have that boost kick on deck, those grabs on deck, and it's just very, very hard when paired up against Bayonetta and her friend. Yeah, it, it, it's really rough because Nairo is very proficient with multiple characters. We've seen him use Diddy Kong versus Salem yeah. in the past. And Nairo also has a very competent Cloud. Yeah. Um, so he does have some top tier options against Bayonetta uh, that he could potentially use. It's all about his mindset and his comfort zone. Silent Doom, do you want to add on to that? Yeah, I was actually just going to say it was interesting that Abba, in order to get here, he had to defeat Bayonetta. He had to defeat Salem. That was really the key that allowed him to get enough points to make it into the 2GGC. That was that MKLeo side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now, using a poli- very polished looking Bayonetta, that is what has allowed him to even to get this far. Yes. To get to the potential top eight. And that's that to me is quite remarkable. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Abadango is another player that has multiple characters under his belt. Sure. We've seen the Bayonetta so far, but we also have to remember Meta Knight and Mewtwo under his belt. Yeah. So that's a very dangerous threat going mm-hmm. forward uh, as Group B starts to wrap up. And Abadango, again, looking to be in great shape to make it out of Group Man, B yeah. winner's side. But we're going to take a, a little trip down to Soylent's Bar with Swar. Swar, what you got for us, man? Wow. All year, 5-0. Didn't matter. Nairo had such a lead over Abadongo. Just genius for what I just saw. Group B is now Group Bayonetta, for sure. 3-0 this season. Abadongo now advances, potentially, all things considered. Captain Zach would probably have to lose for now to even have a chance to get out of Group B. But, I mean... I don't know. The, the titles these, the, these two players have under their belts, I mean, Nara has so many. I mean, just looking at MLG World Finals, that always comes to mind. 2015, but even then Super Smash Con 2016, 2017, and then Abba takes Pound 2016, which is, of course, like, history by now, but now we're seeing changes with Abadango. Going from Me Too to a Bayonetta pick that we saw, like, completely <laughs> pull it out. I mean, I'm amazed. The statistics now are pretty much in limbo, so... We're going to see how the rest of this pool plays out. Group B, probably the one to take the night. Pass it over back to the desk. Take it away, Gunblade. 